I'm going to be doing this video entirely unscripted. So, I will apologize ahead of time if I ramble, repeat myself, or leave some stuff out. I have this vintage computer here that I built recently. It is a 486 DX4 100 with 16 megs of RAM, 850 meg hard drive, running Windows 95 original, the very first version of Windows 95. It is effectively a recreation of a computer from my childhood. Right down to every single spec, even a lot of the parts are the exact same models and revisions as the computer from my childhood. But I'm not here to talk about this computer in general. Instead, I want to talk about how I get it on the internet. Now, I know, Windows 95, you really don't want to use that on today's internet. But I want to do it just for fun. Just for fun. Now, I have tried a couple different things. And at first, I need to say, the only means of communications this computer has built in is a 14.4 modem. No network card, just a modem. So, how am I going to get it on the internet? Because, uh, second off, I don't have landline phone service here. I have VOIP, which is not good for dial-up. I don't have a dial-up service anyway that I could call into. So, what do I do here? First off, we got this little computer here. This is a tablet from my old employer. Yes, I used to work for Radio Shack. Running Windows XP. This has built-in wireless and a built-in modem. And I have configured this to work as a dial-up server. And yes, I did apply the registry edit to this so that it will continue to get updates. So I'm not really concerned about using this on the internet. Now, we have the server taken care of. This was, this was easy to do. The next step, and the most difficult part, has been figuring out how to get this computer to talk to this computer. Now, I happen to luck out because I found out if you directly connect a phone line from this computer to this one, they will communicate if you use HyperTerminal or another terminal program and manually tell the modems to dial and connect to each other, they will connect and they will talk to each other. Now, not every computer can do this, especially most Win modem based computers. A lot of those require a line voltage in order to connect and communicate. I just happen to luck out that neither of these computers require line voltage. So, we have a way to connect them together, but we have no way to actually make the line ring, so to speak, so that this computer knows when to answer. So I've tried a couple different things. The first thing I tried was this little guy. I don't know what the official name for this is off the top of my head. I just call it a phone line simulator. Basically, I plug one computer into one side, the other computer into the other side. Then I tell this computer, the 486, to dial. And this little box automatically sends a ring signal to that computer. And then after two rings, this computer will answer. Now, I have looked up a lot about these little things and a lot of people have said that they work well for them but I was not able to get this to reliably work for me now I'm not saying that if you were to ever try something like this yourself that this would not work for you for all I know it could just be the particular combination of computers I have here and yes I did try attenuating the the sound level using these switches on the bottom. It does mention that in the instructions, but that did not help either. But anyway, like I said, uh, even though this didn't work for me, it might work for others, because like I said, others were saying that it worked for them. And just one caveat, if you do decide to try this, 
these only support 28.8 modems at at maximum speed, uh, which for me would not have been a problem if I were to get this to work because the 486 only has 14.4. So if I can't use this little box to send a ring signal to this computer to make it answer, what do I do? Notice the nest of wires back there. I got something I put together. It is a box with a red button on it and a phone jack. I made my own ring signal generator. I guess you could call it that. At the wall, it has an AC power adapter. I got it from Radio Shack. I don't remember what model it is, but it's for it's designed for older answering machines. It puts out about 10 volts AC. And then inside this box, there is another transformer that steps that back up to approximately 90 volts AC. I couldn't just shove pure 120 volts into this phone line. That's too much. Because the ring voltage is around 90 volts. And so I have this box here. Whenever I push this button, it makes the phone ring. And I actually have a phone connected so I can confirm that it is ringing. And I'll put, I push this button twice and this computer answers. And it's worked perfectly. But getting this to work takes a little bit of fumbling with cables and timing. Because what I need to do first is I need to unplug the 486 because I don't want to be feeding back a ring signal into an active modem that could potentially fry it. We don't want to do that. Now, on this computer, I will open up my dial-up connection, which I have recreated exactly as, I, as it was when I was a kid. Now, this company does not exist anymore. That phone number does not exist anymore. So this is all just for nostalgia purposes. I have configured it to dial without waiting for a dial tone. This is necessary. Really, you could have a dial any old random number, but like I said, for nostalgia, I wanted to set it up the way it was when I was a kid. Now, what I do, tell it to connect. And it is dialing. Now, I make it ring twice, and immediately after the second ring, I plug in the 486. And this might fumble with the camera. And they are connecting. remember it taking forever back in the day like this even. There we go. Connected 14.4 and to prove that it is on the internet. Let's ping Google. And I'll go around here briefly and show you. No network cable, just a phone line. And it is connecting through this computer, which is then passing it on to the Wi-Fi. Now, for nostalgia purposes, I do have Netscape Navigator 3.0 gold. That's what I had on there before. I also have AOL 3.0 on here, again, for nostalgia purposes. AOL does not even work anymore. It outright refuses to connect with that version. Netscape barely works, but it is a whole hideous mess of error messages. So instead, I have a browser, which I did not put a shortcut on the desktop for, apparently, or on the start menu, but in here, I have a browser that is 
still fairly outdated, but a lot more compatible with the internet. And this is a nice lightweight browser, but it is very, very limited as to what it can do. So let's go to, uh, let's see, bogons.org. That's a website that deals with vintage computers that I like to go to. And of course it doesn't load very well because this is actually a fairly not very well supported web browser. By the way, just for the fun of it, I did try getting Firefox Portable 2. Point whatever it was working on here, or maybe it was 1.5, I don't remember. It ran, but oh my god, was it slow. So, yeah. That's how I've connected a 486 computer with only dial-up to the internet by using this as a server and a little homemade box to ring signal, to, to make the ring signal so that this computer knows when to answer. And again, I will repeat what I said earlier. Not every computer supports direct modem to modem connections like this. A lot of, a lot of them, especially newer ones, require line voltage. This does not put line voltage on the line. These two just happen to work perfectly fine without line voltage. So if you wanted to try this yourself, you would definitely need to make sure that both computers support direct connections without line voltage. Or better yet, figure out how to get this to work because this does put line voltage on it. I was just not able to get this to work in my particular setup. So. Mm, if you have access to one of these or can find one or something similar to it, you might have better luck than me. But for me, this homemade solution seems to work just fine. And in fact, <laughs> it has the added benefit that on my main computer, which is running Windows 10, I can get into the hard drive on this computer via file sharing, network file share. It works perfectly fine. Uh, it's slow as god-awful frozen molasses in January, but it works, and actually that's how I've copied some files onto here. Now, I I'm a patient guy, so I don't mind how slow it is, but it's actually a workable solution for me. And I am rambling again, and I apologize for that ahead of time. But yeah, that's how I do it. 486 on the internet using uh, a Windows XP tablet as the server and a little homemade box to tell the tablet when to answer. Thank you for watching.